Hey, this is Renee. Welcome back to another video on this channel. And today I want to work on this smart money concept uh, base indicator that indicates the highs and lows. And um, I will show you how to make it look from this, where you have multiple lows uh, following each other, more like this, where these following highs and lows are just taken out of the picture. So everything looks a lot cleaner, a lot smoother and better to work with in the end, I guess. So what do we got to do to achieve this? So let's go back to our code. So if you do not have this code yet, uh, make sure to watch the previous video that I made where I explained how to write the code that does, um, yeah, th that, that draws all the highs and lows. And now we will just adjust this code so we do not um, see all the highs and lows, but only the ones that are, um, yeah, like we want them to take turns. So what, what we got to do here is whenever we find a high, for example, here, before we um, say that there is a new high, we want to check if this new high is um, uh, worth being printed. So we want to check if this is higher than the previous high. And the way to achieve this is, um, first of all, we want to check if um, we have a or if the last <clears throat> uh, extremum was a high or a low. And therefore, we need to create a variable. So what we do here is we say last direction, for example, and also later on, we will need a variable that uh, will give us the time of the last um, extremum. So this will hold the value of the last extremum, we will put one for highs and minus one for lows, and this will give us the time. So what we want to do here is we want to check if the last direction was greater than zero, which means the last um, signal or the last thing that was drawn by this indicator was a high. And what we want to do next is we want to get the index of this specific high. So we will use the i bar shift function for this, which will give us the uh, index, the bar index, um, which we can get by providing a time and this is what we will store in this last time variable and now we can check if the high in uh, or at uh, index index <laughs> if this one is smaller than this new high so we want to check if this is smaller than high i plus depth or at i plus depth and if this is true if the last high was smaller, then we'd simply want to delete the last highs. So let's get to our highs array at index index. And let's say this should be empty value now. So the value should be deleted. But what happens if this new high, um, or if, 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 if the, the last high here, if it is higher than the new high, then we don't want to print the new high. So we simply continue here and we do not process what is coming next. But yeah, if the new high is higher, again, we delete the old high. And then of course, we also have to update the direction. And we have to say last time should be um, the time at index i plus depth. And there's one important thing to make this work. We will also have to say array set a series here for the time array and set this to true because time is also one of the arrays that we get here as a parameter for the calculate. Okay, so let's check out if this is working um, in our program. Um, this is not, <laughs> really, not really working right now, I think. Oh, okay, I know what I mess, messed up here um, because we only want to continue here if this is not true. Because um, if this is true and we delete the old high, then of course we want to print the new high or to mark the new high in the chart. And we do not want to do so if, um, yeah, if, the, if, the, uh, if the old high is higher than the new high. But if we add this else and compile everything again, we should hopefully see highs now. Wait, why aren't we seeing any highs here? Okay, I think I figured it out. This kinda only makes work if we add the code for the lows too already, because otherwise um, it would always have the highest high here as a benchmark, and then we would never really add more highs, I think. This is the 
problem and yeah therefore we will have to copy this block add it here for the lows and then we have to check if last direction was smaller than the zero get the index of the last low then check if low at index is greater than low at index i plus depth and then we will erase this low and otherwise we will print a new low oh and then yeah also we'll have to add this code here and like this so let me check real quickly if this works yeah now it works so you can see now um, it will erase all the highs and lows in between that are irrelevant and it makes it look much cleaner so again let's let, let me explain what we did in this tutorial first of all i added these two global variables last direction and last time Th these are the variables where we want to store the the last direction obviously and the the time of the last uh, high or low and then um, in the on calculator it's important to set the time array as a series and then in this for loop whenever we add a new high or low for example for a high we want to check if the previous a signal was also a high and in this case we want to get the index of this high which we can get using the last time and then we want to check if this high like this is the last high that the indicator printed if this is smaller than the high that we just identified and if the last high is smaller than the high that we just identified we want to delete the last high and if it is bigger then we do not want to print the new high. We just want to continue in a for loop. But if, um, yeah, if we erase the last high, then of course we want to draw the new high. This is what we do here. We set the value for the new high in the highs array. This will of course uh, print the small dot in the chart. And then we will set the last direction to one and update the last time. So next time we will find a high, we will compare it to the high at this specific time. For the shorts, or not, not for the shorts, but for the lows, we will do exactly the same. We will just turn around some of these logical operators here and, uh, of course, always work with low and lows arrays, but the rest is pretty much the same. And this is how to get rid of the um, unwanted in between highs and lows. So I hope you were able to follow along. Um, again, make sure to check out the first video if you didn't watch it and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you do not want to miss anything else that I will add to this series for this indicator or when I start um, writing expert advisors and stuff with this indicator. So thanks for watching. Have a great time. Good trades. Bye.